Bread making is the oldest form of baking known to man, and I always think of it as kind of ancient and magical, but it's also profoundly simple. And in this lesson, we're going to show you how to make a classic whole wheat loaf at home. You'll notice that I have the dough hook attachment in place on my mixer, which is exactly what you need for bread making. If you don't have an electric mixer, obviously bread's been made by hand for thousands of years and it's not a problem at all. I'll show you in a few minutes how to knead it. To start off with, I'm adding 750 grams of whole wheat flour into the mixer. And you can add it all in one big cloud of flour. And then I'm adding in 15 grams of yeast and this is going to make quite a large loaf of bread and I'm just taking care to add the yeast onto one side of the mixing bowl and then I just need to add one teaspoon of salt to the other side of the mixing bowl and it's important to take care to add them to opposite sides of the bowl because actually salt and yeast are not friends and if the salt spends too much time in contact with the yeast it can damage the yeast's effectiveness. Now I'm adding in one tablespoon of olive oil, which is not essential, but it does add a nice flavor and a little extra richness to your bread. You'll notice that I haven't sieved the flour for my bread dough, and that's absolutely fine. It's standard when you're making bread. Now I'm ready to start adding in the water. And I just have the mixer on the lowest speed, and I'll add it in a couple of stages. And don't add it all at once because Different flours have different moisture content, so you might not even need all of the water that's in the recipe. If you're in doubt about how much water to add in or about the consistency of your bread dough, just remember the wetter the better. If you have a more moist bread dough, it gives you a better rise and a much nicer end result. All the flour has now been incorporated into one neat ball of dough and there's no remaining flour left on the inside of the mixing bowl. And you can see it's come away completely clean. So now we're ready to invest in a little bit of elbow grease and give this a good kneading. You can already smell the yeast working its magic through the dough. For simple kneading, you need a well-floured surface and enough flour so that you have a little bit on your hands as well. And what you do is take the heel of your hand and push it away from you into the bread. And then you pull back and fold it over and give the bread a slight turn and then repeat that same action. And if it gets too sticky at any stage, just add a little extra flour. And kneading bread activates the glutens in the flour and that gives you your strands of protein and your structure in the bread. I kind of picture it in my head as giving the bread legs to stretch and to grow and to rise. And although you could do this almost completely in your electric mixer, at the end of the day it's a clinical cold machine and I think bread of all things that you bake really needs life and love from human hands. A thorough kneading will take you between five and 10 minutes, but just think about it as good exercise. And you'll know that the dough is ready for its first proving when you can see that there's really good strands of gluten starting to develop in the bread. And also, if you roll it into a smooth ball and you press gently on the surface of the dough, it should almost spring back. Okay, this dough is now ready for its first proof, which just means the time that it's given to rise quietly in a slightly warm place. All we need to do is just add a little drizzle of olive oil to this bowl, and then take your bread and rub it around, and that way it won't stick to the inside of the mixing bowl. And then you cover it gently with a clean tea towel and you just leave it to do its thing, undisturbed. And I have another one here that I made about an hour ago and it's had the time 
to prove and rise quietly and you can see that it's almost doubled in size and it's really light and pillowy. So we just gently knock it back and kind of punch out the air and then take it back to the counter. Add a little more flour. And you just give it a quick second kneading just to bring it back together. And then it's ready to go into a lightly greased loaf tin and it'll have a second rise and then go into the oven. And to prepare it for the loaf tin, what I do is just kind of flatten it out using the heel of your hand or the tips of your fingers. And then I roughly fold it into thirds, one and one. Place that face down and tuck it gently into the loaf tin. Now we just need to cover this with a clean tea towel and leave it to rise again for about 45 minutes or an hour and then it will be ready to go into the oven. After 45 minutes the bread has risen again by about two-thirds so all I do now is gently dust the surface with a little bit of flour. This is now ready to go into the oven, but before we do that, I have just one little trick I want to show you. Adding ice cubes to your oven while your bread is baking creates a nice steamy environment, and it also gives you a really crispy crust and a nice rise on your loaf of bread. So I just add the ice cubes to a shallow baking tray. So we leave the bread to bake in an oven that's been preheated to 200 degrees Celsius for between 40 and 45 minutes. The last trick that you need to remember is when you're checking for doneness on your loaf of bread. All you do is just flip it out. You just give a little knock on the base of your bread loaf and if it sounds hollow, that means it's ready. So thank you for hanging out with me while I walked you through bread baking basics. I hope that you now have the confidence to try your own loaves at home. And don't forget that there's extra recipes, troubleshooting guides, quizzes and course notes available for you. I'll see you in the next lesson.